Here we go, back again with another video. And yes, today's, today's video is a multiple, multiple subject video. And we will start off with the title, Will Sunderland be playing Newcastle next season? Now, the only possible way Sunderland will be playing Newcastle next season will be, of course, in the championship. Yes, so we'll start off with Sunderland. Will Lee Johnson take Sunderland up to the championship this season? This is our fourth season in League One, or is it our fifth season? It could even be our tenth season. The years are flying by. It seems like forever in a day we were in the championship with Mr. Coleman. Yes, Mr. Coleman. But that seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Chris Coleman, Sunderland's manager, when we had Ellis Short in charge and owning of Sunderland Association Football Club. Now, Sunderland this season are doing better than the previous seasons under different managers. Lee Johnson came in the back end of last season. We just lost out in the playoffs to Lincoln. But now our team is younger, fitter, stronger. Barring accidents, injuries and COVID, we're in a better position now than we were last season. Look at the run Lee Johnson has got this team going under. They started off, you know, we did lose a couple of games against Portsmouth, against Charlton, against Rotherham, against Sheffield Wednesday, but since then, we have turned. Not we. Lee has turned the team around. The team have turned the team around itself with wins against Ipswich, drawn against Shrewsbury, beat in Cambridge, who incidentally beat Newcastle yesterday, but we'll get onto that in a bit. Then, Sunderland drew against Oxford, we had three home games on the bounce. We beat I think it was Morecambe 5-0, we beat Plymouth 2-1. Then down at Ipswich, down to Portman Road, we earned a hard-earned draw. Then a win at Doncaster, we won 3-0. 5-0 win at Sheffield Wednesday. And then yesterday, the 3-3 draw against Wickham, which was really, really unlucky. And to be fair, from the final third upwards, it was the better performance I've seen Sunderland play all season. Smooth, on the floor, swift flowing, fast speedy football and 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 Stewart unlucky not to get he was robbed actually he was robbed of a hat trick yesterday seeing that the ball came off Stockdale's bottom to go in the back of the net well I'm sure it already crossed the line it did it crossed the line and you know AFL's crossing the line by not giving him a hat trick but yes that's the form Lee Johnson's in we brought a new lad in and try Hume yes from Lingfield in Ireland Premier League in Ireland experienced for his years of age of only 19 now are we going to get promoted this season at the moment this moment in time we're level on games joint top with Rotherham apart from sorry level on points but Rotherham have one game in hand now we are four points ahead of Wickham on the same games played but there's a conundrum now because the Wigan manager and owner whatever who, whoever it is has said this one to try and extend the league one season just to suit them one team only let's make an exception to the rule for one team only Wigan because they haven't been able to get their games in whether it's their fault or not I do not know I know some games were forced off by I think Lincoln's game was postponed Fleetwood's game was postponed and you know end of the day it's hard lines with Wigan but would Sunderland would the AFL extend the season for Sunderland if Lee Johnson decided to call out six, seven games? Probably not. So why should Wigan be the exception to the rule? It was hard lines for Sunderland in that situation where Wickham leapfrogged up into the playoff position when Sunderland could have been up there, you know, because of the COVID restrictions. And, and even Peterborough, I think, at the time was the ones that were hard done by. So yes, you know, rules are there for a reason. Wigan are going to have to play three games a week for the rest of the season, more or less, to catch up. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. You know, that's, that's the way it is. If it's unlucky, it's unlucky. But for me, you do not extend the season. I do apologise to Wigan fans and Wigan players and all that, but it's the way it goes, you know. If you win your games, Wigan, you get promoted. As simple as that, it's in your own hands. Lee Johnson has played his games this season, no interruption with COVID at all. And we've had plenty of people out with COVID. We've got one keeper. We've had to return Patterson back from Notts County on loan to go and goal to see this game go ahead. Hoffman and Burge out with COVID. 
We have plenty of players out with COVID at this moment in time, but Lee Johnson has praised the team, praised Patterson, praised the full team, and praised you know, everybody else going around that's made this game go ahead yesterday against Wigan. We were only one minute away from three points in. It was a good performance, and I did feel for the fans, I did feel for the players, but at the beginning of the game, with the COVID, I would have said, a point would have been a great result yesterday. So I'm happy with the point. Now we move on to week to Lincoln during the week. Now, if we beat Lincoln during the week, four points in two games, can I say he's getting promoted this season? Yes, I can. We have a good run of fixtures coming up. And for me, we keep battling away, keep getting three points at home, the odd win away, an odd draw, and I have no I've got, I've got no sort of doubts at all in my mind that Sunderland can get promoted this season and can make it to the championship in this improving team with players coming in and more players that could be coming in. Like I said, I think it's Patrick Roberts, that's his name, could be coming in and other players to boot. So we will have the ammunition to go to war and do battles and get promoted this season. Now, if Sunderland get promoted this season, will they be playing a time where you derby next season against Newcastle? Newcastle, the richest club in the entire world. You know, and this is how their, their club's broken down. The Public Investment Fund own 80% of Newcastle. Now, this Public Investment Fund has been going since 1971, and the chairman is Mohammed bin Salman. You know, I don't even know how many billions this guy has. He may even go into trillions. This is how much the money Newcastle's worth now, you know? And then they have the R&B Sports Media, 10%, that's the Rubin Brothers. And then the old Amanda Stavely, Amanda Stavely. You know, I just sometimes you see people and you just, you just take a natural dislike to them, don't you? I don't hate anybody in the world. I don't even hate Newcastle. I don't hate anybody. But when I see Amanda Stavely, I'm like, oh, she does me head in. But never mind, that's another thing. PCP, she's probably a lovely woman with a lovely family. I, mean, I do wish you all the best in the future at Newcastle. I really do. From the bottom, from the pits and the delves of me heart, I wish Amanda all the best at Newcastle. But she owns 10% with this PCP group. Now, when we look at Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe, again, is the manager of Newcastle United and he's being brought in by the new investment fund, by this massive consortium, the richest owners in the world, to take Newcastle out of the relegation battle and keep them in the Premier League. Now, when this PCP and uh, P I F, -F and, uh, and the R and B, R and B, yes, R and B, a nice bit of soul there. All them numbers and names and letters that confuses my brain. When they took over and become the richest club in Newcastle, richest club in the world, was I disappointed? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Yes, of course. I, you know, end of the day, yesterday when Cambridge beat Newcastle, did I have a smile on my face? Of course I did. Was I looking at the result last 10 minutes when I saw the biggest shock in the FA Cup competition yesterday? I was, I was keeping an eye on the game. And I was over the moon for Cambridge. And I had a little bit of a chuckle and a little bit of a laugh. But I'm sure Newcastle fans would do the same for Southern, just the same over these years. They've been laughing at us for the last three or four seasons. So I was a little bit happy yesterday. Now, if Cambridge got beat yesterday and Newcastle won, would I be disappointed? No, I wouldn't have. Do I want to see Newcastle win the Premier League, win the FA Cup, get into Champions League football? No, I do not. But the realist in me head says they're going to. So the best thing that Newcastle could do to delay that from happening is to be relegated. Do I want Newcastle to be relegated? Honest opinion? Either way, I'm not particularly bothered, but I would side with yes, for the simple reason I would love a time we in Derby, time we are Derby next season. If Newcastle stay up, would I be good at? No, I wouldn't. I don't hate them. I couldn't, you know, basically give a shit what goes on there, to be honest. It's that it's good banter. I like a bit of banter with the fans. You know, I've got some good, good Newcastle fans that really come onto my channel and support this channel. So why would I go and slate off a club? I would like to see in an ideal world both North East teams, the top end of the Premier League table and battling it out for the Premier League title. That would be a fantastic dream at some point in the future. Will it ever happen in my lifetime? 
Probably not, but you never know, KLD, his mother's, the, I think she's something like the richest woman in football, the richest woman, in, one of the richest women in the world. So she does have the money, he has the money, and he's going to be a wise man, he's going to build up the club slowly, step by step, bring the youthful players through step by step. If the youth take into the system, take into believe what's going on at the club, we could have a really good team, a really good squad in the future. But Newcastle, yes, under Eddie Howe, I do have... A bit of a soft spot for Eddie Howe. I do like him. I like him as the Burnley manager. Sorry, the Bournemouth manager. And he was possibly one of the worst managers that come into Newcastle because I do have, like I say, I do like Eddie Howe. I do wish Eddie Howe all the best. And he's looking to, he's brought in Kieran Trippier. Kieran Trippier, 31 year old, played yesterday. Look at the squad, the team that played against Cambridge yesterday. Dubravska, Trippier, Kraft, Shaw. Richie, Shelby, Joe Linton, Longstaff, Frazier. Then we have St. Maximan and Murphy all playing in that side yesterday. And they could not beat Cambridge. But they could get a draw against Manchester United. So that proves to me there is something wrong with the players. There's something wrong with the core of the players. There's something wrong with, you know, have they got the passion to win a game of football, to keep Newcastle in the Premier League. Have they got the heart, the drive, the want, the will, the desire to keep Newcastle in the Premier League? Do I see it week in, week out? One win in 19 games says to me, that's ah, not good enough, is it? Let's face it, they played 19 games. They've won one, drawn eight, lost 10, scored 19 and let in 42 goals. Now, let in 42 goals is the joint worst defence in the Premier League. Scoring 19 goals is only the third highest, third lowest of bottom, should we say. Eight goals Norwich have scored, 14 Wolves have scored and then... 16 Burnley, so it's the fourth bottom. We've got 40, 19 goals, Newcastle, but that defence is shocking. Now the defender they're trying to bring in is this guy called Sven Botman, Danish 21-year-old international from AC Milan, and AC Milan do not want him to go. But does money talk? Is Sven going to take an opportunity, a chance? Is he allowed to go for starters from AC Milan, but is he going to jump boat? Boatman, Boatman. Is he going to jump the bottom, the Boatman, Boatman, and come to Newcastle? But money talks. Kevin Trippier at supposedly on £130,000 a week? Wages? Really? Jolin's on about £80,000? So imagine how much this lad's going to want it. At the age of 21, he's going to want to get at least the same as Kevin, Kevin Trippier. Definitely. Also, Chris Wood has been, you know, talked about coming from Burnley. Will he jump ship from Burnley and go to Newcastle? Because looking at the table, there's only four teams that's going to go out of the possible four teams. Three will go down. Norwich look gone. I do think Norwich are gone, have gone. Watford for me, you know, as much as I like Claudio Ranieri, I think Watford for me are gone. And Burnley and Newcastle are the two. Burnley have two games in hand over Newcastle. But... Burnley are not in a good run of form and not playing well. This could be the season Burnley go down to. I think Newcastle will get relegated this season. No, I don't for the simple fact they have the money to spend to buy big names, buy quality players, better quality than Norwich, Watford and Burnley could ever have in the second part of the season. They could almost buy in a complete new team. I know they won't be allowed. I don't know what they are. I don't even know what the financial fair play rule is in the Premier League. But they can bring in at least five or six players and turn their season around very easily. So Newcastle fans out there, do I think there'll be a time where you derby? Do I want a time where you derby? Yes, I do. Hand on me heart. I'm being honest. I want Newcastle to get relegated so we can play in the Champions because I want Southern to get promoted. But do I think with me head, you will go down. I think anybody out there with a bit of cash, get your money on Newcastle staying up because I think it's an absolute cert. You mark my words. There's no way Newcastle will be getting relegated this season. But... There's always that small chance that the core of the players are not good enough. They don't have the killer instinct. Again, the drive. you got Jabravna. I thought he was a good goalkeeper. I've probably not been pronouncing his name right, but yesterday's goal against Cambridge. It was absolutely shocking, wasn't it? The, the, the fans were complaining. The sellout, 52,000 fans at the FA Cup third round. That shows, you know, how much passion there is for football in the North East. 
you know, we've got 35,000 fans, whatever it is, going to Sunderland in League One and Newcastle, 52,000, you know, in the Premier League. So two fantastic North East sides should really be doing battle in the Premier League and they will do one season coming up very shortly. Like I said before, this team drew against Manchester United but couldn't beat Cambridge. There's something wrong with the soul of the team, something wrong with it. Next four next four games, they've got Watford at home. There's no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute cert on the coupon. Get your money on Newcastle at home against Watford. For Newcastle is a guaranteed cert to beat Watford. Then we'll wait the Leeds touch touch and go. Everton home. Everton are in dire straits too. That could be another three points. And then Villa at home. Villa under Steven Gerrard. That will be a difficult game. So for me, the the Watford match. They will leapfrog Watford out of the bottom three this weekend with a win. There's no way in the world Clangy, Cla Claudio Ranieri will, the Tinker Man, will have Watford beat Newcastle. Mark my words. There you go. So, Newcastle time with your derby. I hope there is, but there probably won't be. Now we'll move on to this weekend's game on Tuesday, not weekends. Tuesday's match against Lincoln. Sunderland versus Lincoln. Lincoln won yesterday against Oxford. Yes, they won yesterday against Oxford. And they played 23 games, they've won 6, drawn 7 and lost 10. 25 points, 2 points off the relegation bottom 4. And they have a minus 5 goal difference. Lincoln beat Watford. No, he beat Oxford 2-0, not Watford. They probably could beat Watford because Watford are in awful form. But they beat Oxford 2-0 with a 4-3-3 system. Chris Maguire, Whittaker and Scully were the three up front. We beat them in the playoffs last season at home. But we went out on... Got on, on the, on the, the, I don't know, some kind of, oh shit, need to drop your paint. Some sort of goal difference because we got beat them away, didn't we? But Lincoln, since, since, after, before that game against Oxford, they got beat with MK Dons, yes. And then there was a break between them and Covid where they drew the game before that against Cheltenham. They lost to Crew, they lost to Stanley, they lost to Portsmouth, they drew against Doncaster, drew against Shrewsbury. The last win against, was against Wigan back in October 23. 23rd of October, then that big break between yesterday's win against Oxford. So Lincoln, seriously, are not in good form. And if we have any ambition to get promoted, we've got to back up that fantastic draw yesterday. And I say fantastic for the reasons we have a depleted squad. Squad, we do not pussy out with COVID unless two or three more go missing and we don't have a squad at all. But who do we play against Lincoln? Now, Lincoln, for me... It's going to be a difficult match. You know, you've got Michael Appleton as a manager, you know, that sort of. Looks like he's been swallowing a wasp and either way he looks, looks angry all of the time. And he's going through a bad. I thought, I didn't believe, I couldn't believe Lincoln are that far down the table. Considering the playoffs last season. Is it the sort of hangover from the playoffs? But Patterson in goal, who I don't blame for any goals yesterday. Now, Sirkin, Flanagan, Doyle, Winchester. I would bring Winchester from the right back to the centre of midfield because there's no way Evans will be allowed to play when he was knocked clean out yesterday. And again, I reiterate, I do hope Evans is perfectly fine and well. I do hope you've recovered and talk. And, and listening to Lee Johnson's interview last night, it does seem that he's recovered okay and that was the precaution with everything that went on to take him off. Good Pritchard, Embleton Stewart, if there's no injuries, I would bring in Hume, I'd bring in Tri Hume, why not? Who else have we got to bring in? You're going to have to something like put Gooch back there and bring in someone like Josh Hawks, aren't you? Or have Diamond on one side, Embleton on the other, and put Gooch. And, and, so you're messing about a bit, but you're bringing a right back who's been playing right back, who should be fit from all the 55 games he's played for Linkfield. And the games he's played, 19 games or something he's played this season, I forget what it is. He should be fit. Put him in at the deep end against Lincoln. Not the hardest game in the world, and I think we're going to win this game. I'm going to go for a 3 0 win against Lincoln. Do you have the greatest sports noggin? Can you predict the correct score against Lincoln on Tuesday? Four, ten points. Now, nobody out there predicted 3 3 yesterday, and you know, it was a difficult game to predict. 3 3? No, we didn't. But at this moment in time, under the league table, and if you want to join in for ten points, put your score prediction down, and you know, let me know what the score is going to be against Lincoln on Tuesday. Angelic skin, 77, 60 points, Jonathan Mariner, 60 points, Nathan Coolio, 50 points, Philip Emerson, 40, Doug B, 40, and there's ample more on 30, 20s and 10s, so join in, leave your script, if you've got the greatest sports noggin, I think you can do better, like Sir Jeff Stella and myself, put your score down below in the comments section, and hopefully Sunderland can go top of the table on Tuesday night.
and we'll probably have five games played more than Wigan. We've got four games played more than Wigan now, we're five points ahead. Wigan have got a hard run in the next two or three weeks, three games each week. We can get promoted this season, I've got to believe we can, you believe we can, after the performance we've been playing in this unbeaten eight match. But we've got to take it to, take it to Lincoln on Tuesday, hopefully Touchwood win Lincoln on Tuesday and we'll go top of the table. Thanks for watching the video, please su subscribe to the channel and let me know, will there be a time where you derby next season? Because, for me, if Newcastle go down, then there's obviously going to be a massive couple of seasons, three, four seasons at least, before they become the Premier League champions or the FA Cup winners or into the Champions League. It just bears, it, it just bears to think about, doesn't it, really? I don't want it ever to happen, but... Would it ruin my life if Newcastle were Premier League champions? No, it wouldn't. I know, end of the day, I wish them all the best. Right, take care. God bless. We'll see you later.